Right now we're living in a world where the 2017 MVP race is all anyone's really talking about. And that's perfectly understandable. I mean, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, all of those guys are having absolutely monster years and they deserve the attention they're getting. But in a league where the top stars are so dominant, some of the other great players aren't getting the press they deserve, which is a shame, but today we're going to fix that problem. So how are you guys doing? My name is Mike and today we're going to talk about the five players that I think are the most underrated in the league. So right now, predict who you think I'm going to name is the most underrated player in the league. And let's see if we agree. Number five, Kevin Love. When making this list, I almost left Kevin Love off of it because he is an all-star and he did just win an NBA championship. But let's be honest here. When the stars of the Cavs are talked about, the two guys discussed are LeBron and Kyrie. After that, people see everyone else on the roster as a role player. Leading up to this year's all-star break, Break, it wasn't even a guarantee that K-Love would be voted into the game, which is just crazy to me. Because remember just three seasons ago, Kevin Love was seen as a franchise player on the Minnesota Timberwolves after he put up an awesome 26 points and 12.5 rebounds a game. Then he decided he wanted to win and took a lesser role in Cleveland, where his stats have understandably taken a drop, but he won the championship that he left Minnesota for. Now, does this situation situation remind you of anything. It should, because Chris Bosh already lived through this story just a few years ago. During the time the Miami Heat were a big three, people really undervalued Bosh's contributions to two championship teams. It wasn't until we all looked back at those teams that we realized how impactful Chris Bosh was for the Miami Heat. And just looking at our situation right now, the same can easily be said about Kevin Love. Sure, in his first two seasons, Kevin took some time to adjust to playing with LeBron and Kyrie. I mean, there were definitely some bright spots, including game seven of last year's NBA finals, but there were certainly some down moments as well. This year, even the biggest doubters of Kevin Love's abilities should have fallen silent. As K-Love has returned to all-star level form while putting up 20 points and 11 rebounds a game. Looking at this nice jump in stats, the biggest reason for this success is that Kevin Love is finally playing at the playing weight he wants to be on the court at. As remember, two summers ago, he spent almost the entire offseason rehabbing an injured shoulder. This would be very detrimental to his 2016 season. Because remember, Minnesota Kevin Love was more, I'll put this in the best way possible, heavy? Let's just say the guy wasn't in the best athletic shape, but that helped him grab a ton of rebounds. So when he slimmed down, he needed all the muscle he could get to still maintain his advantage on the boards. But in the summer of 2015, he couldn't get that muscle because his shoulder was injured, which is why he had a down year. And after this offseason, where he was able to work out as much as he possibly wanted, he's regained the muscle he needs to bang with other big men down low, and the numbers show that he's back to his dominant self. The Cavs are 2-4 and four over their last six games, and people have been pointing the finger at LeBron and their new additions. No one is really bothering to mention that maybe this rough patch is because the Cavs lost their all-star power for him. Don't be one of those people, don't downplay Kevin Love's talent. He's a huge part of this Cavs team, and as long as he's healthy in the playoffs, we're going to see that. Number four, Eric Bledsoe. While none of us were looking, Chris Paul's old backup has become one of the best two-way point guards in the league. A man described by some as a six-foot version of LeBron James. Now, at first, that might seem like a stretch, even though we do know Eric Bledsoe is an absolute pit bull on defense. That's been his calling card since his rookie year. But what you might not know is that playing in Phoenix, Bledsoe has grown into a pretty great offensive player as well. Someone who, like LeBron, fills up the stat sheet. I mean, just look at these numbers. This year, he's racking up around 21 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, and 1.5 steals a night. Those are all-star level numbers. In fact, they're almost identical to the numbers Kyle Lowry put up last year when he was an all-star starter and was named to the third team All-NBA. Yet, Eric has no chance of being named to the All-NBA team this year. He wasn't even an all-star. He wasn't even an all-star snub. And the reason for that is very simple. The Phoenix 
Phoenix Suns are one of the worst teams in the NBA right now, which is very unfortunate for Eric Bledsoe. Look, Phoenix, I love you. Devin Booker is my guy. I went on vacation to Phoenix when I was a junior in high school. It was awesome. And I do think you're a promising young team, but the timelines just don't really work out here. Bledsoe is going to be out of his prime before the Suns can build their team into a legitimate contender. So this offseason or sometime in the future, look for the Suns to explore the Eric Bledsoe trade market. When that happens, some team's going to get an all-star level point guard for much less than he's worth, mark my words. And if that team is someone like the Spurs or the Nuggets or the Timberwolves, well, I think Bledsoe's defensive fire and offensive ability will make a huge, huge impact. Number three, Goran Dragic. In the last 25 games of the regular season, the team with the best record is not the Cavaliers or the Warriors or the Spurs or the Rockets. No, the team with the best record over the last 25 games is none other than the Miami Heat. A team that's somehow gone from a real contender for the number one pick in the draft to a team that's so hot that they're beginning to scare the Eastern Conference's top seeds. Seriously, right now, no one wants to play this team and the success of the Heat can be attributed to a few factors here. You can point to the play of Hassan Whiteside or Dion Waiters. You can point to the coaching of Eric Spolstra. But let's be real, coaching only goes so far at the end of the day, you do need some talent, which means that the main reason for this remarkable turnaround is that Goran Dragic has seen a career rejuvenation. For the season, Dragic is averaging 20.2 points, 6.1 assists, 3.9 rebounds, and has a PER of 20. Numbers that are eerily similar to his 2014 campaign, a year that saw him named to the third team All-NBA. Yup, don't forget that Goran Dragic is a legitimate All-NBA player, but he's never really been treated like one. Sure, after being traded to Miami, he signed a huge contract, but up until this year, he's had to spend his days on the Heat paired with Dwayne Wade, a match we all knew from the beginning had no chance of working out, because both guys are just ball-dominant players. So suddenly, a man who was just third-team All-NBA found himself shunned to a corner as a spot-up shooter while Wade took primary ball-handling responsibilities. And to nobody's surprise, Dragic struggled in this limited role. But now, now Goran Dragic has been unleashed and the Miami Heat have been this year's feel-good NBA story. The roster is made up of several guys who have spent some serious time in the D-League, but it hasn't mattered. As soon as Miami handed Goran the keys to the offense, the team has been incredible and Dragic has put up all-star type numbers. So next time you're discussing the best floor leaders in the NBA, do not forget about Goran Dragic. Number two, Rudy Gobert. Let's play the classic player A versus player B game. Player A averages 12.2 points, 13.5 rebounds, 1.7 blocks, has a 20.8 PER and plays for a team with a 39 and 26 record. Player B is averaging 13.1 points, 12.7 rebounds, 2.5 blocks, has a 22.2 PER and plays for a team with a 41 and 24 record. Undoubtedly, we can agree that player B has a better resume, right? Well then, can you please explain to me why DeAndre Jordan made the all-star team over Rudy Gobert? I think Gobert deserves the nod, and I also think he's one of the most promising young big men in the NBA that no one talks about. Seriously, he's outplaying DeAndre Jordan this year, and last year, DeAndre Jordan was the first team all-NBA center. At just 24 years old, Gobert is already leading the entire NBA in blocks per game and defensive rating, and is anchoring the third-ranked team team defense in the league. Oh, and by the way, the Utah Jazz are tied for the fifth best record in the NBA and Rudy leads the team in win shares. But we'll get more into that in a minute because as for the player he's currently beating out in win shares, well, number one, Gordon Hayward. Looking ahead to this summer, everyone's been talking about the Celtics and the Lakers making moves for Jimmy Butler or Paul George. Now, getting either of those guys would be big time, but what no one seems to really care about is that this summer there is an unrestricted free agent who could turn several teams into legitimate championship contenders. Yes, as you already know because I said his name, I'm talking about Gordon Hayward, who in my opinion is the NBA's most underrated player and is possibly one of the most underrated free agents 
agents in league history. But before we get to Hayward's possible free agency, let's talk about how Hayward has risen to become a legitimate top 20 player in the NBA. Because when it comes down to it, yes, Gordon Hayward is now a top 20 player in the league. And if you're not convinced, let's just take a look at his stats compared to Paul George's. As you can see, he's putting up an almost identical stat line to PG, only Gordon has proven to be a more efficient player with a PER of 22.5. Now, this comparison has probably surprised a bunch of you, especially when you consider that Paul George is considered an NBA star, while Gordon Hayward, well, he's really just been known as a pretty good player. So how has he gotten so good? Well, the reason is because he just works harder than everyone else. And the proof of this work ethic could be found in New Orleans just this season, where as a first-time All-Star, Gordon did not spend the Friday afternoon before the All-Star game exploring New Orleans, but instead spent a long afternoon working out with one of his assistant coaches in the gym. Even during the All-Star break, even when he was an All-Star, Gordon Hayward could not stop practicing. This type of dedication has built him from a skinny rookie who averaged just five points a game to a now muscular best player on the sixth best team in the entire NBA. And the thing is, while this work ethic may end up bringing Hayward and the Jazz continued success in Utah, it might also bring another team an NBA championship in the near future. Because as of right now, Gordon has not said that he's staying in Utah, and if he chooses to leave for a title contender this summer, well, you might think this next statement is a little ridiculous, but I think the addition of Gordon Hayward to a championship roster would be more impactful than a team adding Jimmy Butler or Paul George. Because the thing about Hayward is that he puts up big numbers while still remaining the perfect team player in Utah's motion offense. This year, the man is averaging 22.1 points per game, but only takes 15.8 shots a night. Which means that if a team like the Celtics added Hayward to their roster, they'd be getting a high-level all-star player with a great work ethic who can seamlessly fit into their roster without any real growing pains, as Gordon is already programmed to play an unselfish style of basketball. On top of this, again, Hayward is a free agent this summer. Which means a team like the Celtics or Lakers could sign Hayward and then add Jimmy Butler or Paul George through a trade, which would instantly give them one of the best or the best wing duos in the NBA. That is very much in play and it would be absolutely insane if it happened. And with all of that said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know you're going to let me know who you thought was the most underrated player in the comments. Can't wait to see people say I know nothing about basketball. But for real, if you're new, I would love if you subscribe. I make basketball videos like this. I do NBA what ifs. I look at NBA conspiracies. Basically, if it's a cool basketball subject, I'll make a video on it. And other than that, to everyone who's already subscribed, thank you guys so much. You're the best. We know this. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.